Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Dome. I am the medical director of the American Hip Institute. And this lecture will be on hip resurfacing, the alternative to hip replacement. As an overview, the Birmingham hip resurfacing was named for Birmingham, England, where the device's creators developed the system. It's been used globally since 1997 and was approved by the FDA in 2006. In an international study, of over a thousand patients, 99.5% of patients were pleased or extremely pleased with the Birmingham hip resurfacing system. So who is the typical candidate for a BHR or Birmingham hip resurfacing? Typically, this is an active young or middle-aged male. Uh, and the reason it's males is because females seem to have uh, immunologic reactions at a higher rate. And therefore currently the uh, procedure and the implant is approved for males and is most suited for those who are active and young or middle age. Now our country is getting older, but approximately 77 million boomers are in the workforce today and they may remain working longer than any generation before them. Almost half of those live with arthritis, uh, peaking at just over 26 million in 2020. These numbers are increasing and the volume of knee replacements rose between 97 and 05 by 69%, while the volume of hip replacements also rose by 32%. The demand for those procedures was uh, projected to double in the following two decades. So expectations of active patients include, firstly, pain relief. In other words, don't just tell me how to manage my pain, make it go away. Uh, a user-friendly procedure, my implant should enhance my active life, not limit it. And finally, longevity. If I do need an implant, it needs to last as long as possible. So you are likely all familiar with the anatomy of the hip, which is a ball and socket joint, the ball being called the femoral head and the socket being called the acetabulum. The cartilage is the white stuff that cushions our joints, coating the bone of the ball and socket. When osteoarthritis occurs, this is wear and tear or arthritis or wear and tear of the cartilage. The joint loses its cartilage cushing cushion becomes pitted, eroded, uneven, and painful. It may develop bone spurs or osteophytes, and the common activities of daily living may be limited due to extreme pain. So as far as surgical options, the option most widely known is hip replacement. In a hip replacement, the ball and socket are removed. So those bony cuts are made and the ball and socket are entirely removed, and these implant components are placed replacing the entirety of the ball and the socket. The BHR system is a different alternative. In this case, the bony cuts involve milling the outer surface. So only the surface of the femoral head is removed and the implant is a metal coating on the ball and a metal coating on the socket. So if you look at the amount of bone that is removed with the total hip replacement versus a Birmingham hip resurfacing, it is vastly different. Uh, the bone is far more conserved in the hip resurfacing procedure. Now, is BHR minimally invasive? That depends on how you define minimally invasive. So as far as the bone, the answer is yes, because it preserves the body's natural bone structure and resurfaces the bone rather than replaces the entire ball and socket. As far as soft tissue, it depends. The incision length varies by approach. The anterior approach at American Hip Institute is truly muscle sparing so that we go between the muscles and do not cut any muscles while achieving this conservation of the bone that is part of the hip resurfacing procedure. Now, as far as the implant, some of the key benefits are the larger head size, the advanced bearing surface, bone conservation, and higher patient satisfaction at higher activity levels. The head size closely matches the size of the natural femoral head, making it potentially feel like a more natural hip. Uh, this is larger than the typical head of a total hip replacement, and a larger head means a reduced chance of dislocation after surgery. Now, 1% to 3% of total hip replacements dislocate over the lifetime of the implant. In hip resurfacing in a large series, only 0.3% of BHR implants dislocated in the first five years, and Fortunately, at American Hip Institute, that rate of dislocation has thus far been zero. As far as bone conservation, the procedure preserves the natural femoral neck, 
the neck length and angle determine the accurate leg length. Uh, and with the BHR system, since the majority of the bone stock is retained, that preserves the normal uh, leg length and uh, neck length and angle. Uh, on the contrary, with a total hip replacement, the femoral neck is replaced by the implant. Uh, so this is the difference, the BHR uh, cuts here uh, versus the traditional cuts for the hip replacement, as we've already shown. Now, continuing on bone conservation, one of the important considerations is what happens if an implant wears out. Whether it's a hip resurfacing or a hip replacement, either one may wear out eventually. When a hip replacement needs to get redone, that's a revision hip replacement, it's a big deal. And on the femoral side, the stem is usually revised to a lar larger, longer stem, like you see all the way on the right. Now, in if the first surgery was a BHR, then when a revision surgery is need on the, needed on the femoral side, the revision implant typically doesn't need to be used. So the follow-up procedure for the femoral side can be the same total hip replacement stem as would otherwise have been placed initially in doing a primary hip replacement. So this bone conservation in the initial procedure has a potential large advantage down the road. After surgery, rehab after a BHR is similar to total hip replacement. During year one, low impact activities uh, as the bone and muscles adjust to the new stresses are recommended, such as swimming, walking, or bicycling. After year one, higher impact physical activities may be appropriate, such as singles, tennis, or jogging, uh, and permanent limitations are open to discussion. Many of our patients proceed with no limitations at all, and we've had patients run marathons, fight mixed martial arts, power lift, every kind of athletic activity you can imagine, uh, as well as many of our pro athlete patients who have been able to return to professional sports. So this is a, a discussion with the patient depending on their priorities and their athletic activities. As far as results, the Birmingham hip resurfacing is the only resurfacing device in the British orthopedic data evaluation panel with a rating uh, which rates of medical devices to achieve a, a 10A rating, the highest implant, uh, the highest uh, grade an implant can achieve. In the Australian Orthopedic Association's joint registry, the BHR hip accounts for the most hip resurfacing implantations and the best results with a 95% cumulative survivorship at eight years. And in 2008, the Australian Joint Registry study found that resur resurfacing devices outperform total hip replacements for men under age 55, as well as for men uh, in the bracket of age 55 to 64. In a report by Oswestry Outcomes Center Registry, a com combination of results of 18 surgeons in 16 countries found a 98.6% uh, of BHRs uh, reported being pleased or extremely satisfied with the outcome of their BHR at a minimum of 10 years of follow-up. And the same registry showed greater than 95% survivorship at 10-year follow-up. In one recent study of uh, nearly 1,000 patients, uh, patients who received hip resurfacing experienced less thigh pain and functioned at a higher level of physical activity than patients of a similar age, gender, and activity level who received traditional replacements. So those are some results in large studies. In professional athletes, we've seen athletes such as Andy Murray return to professional sports, in this case, tennis, after a hip resurfacing. Our Chicago athlete, Patrick Kane, uh, returned to playing professional hockey at a very high level at the NHL level after hip resurfacing. This particular article uh, from ESPN uh, in, for which I was interviewed on his outcome, uh, as well as uh, some of the outcomes of Andy Murray and Rafael Nadal, noted that it is critical that therapy for a professional athlete be supervised by expert physical therapists. Too early, a return to play can doom the recovery, so careful assessment of their progress and timing of progression is key. And as with all of our innovations and developments at American Hip Institute, I would like to acknowledge the uh, personnel of the American Hip Institute Research Foundation. These researchers who are part of the Institute devote their entire career and, and career lives to helping people get their lives back. 
And at the AHI Research Foundation, the goal is to help people get their lives back by curing arthritis through a three-pronged approach, which involves early diagnosis, preventative treatment, and curative surgery. And it's our belief that with these three prongs, we can cure a majority of joint pain and arthritis in our nation. The Research Foundation does this through its nonprofit work on research, and what follows the research is education, innovation, and awareness, all of which are directed toward that goal of helping people get their lives back. So thank you very much for your attention, and I hope this has been informative.